Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO The Last of Sophia, which we're playing as Komi, but most, more specifically, playing as Alexei Kosygin. The inauguration of President Kosygin. The results are in, it appears that Alexei has been elected as president. Was it simply a dissatisfaction with the status quo, or was there something that Kosygin personally that elevated him above the other candidates? Either way, Kosygin has now stood before the National Assembly, not as a deputy, but as president of the Republic. In his inaugural speech, Kosygin laid out his plans for Comey, deputies of the Republic. We can surely all agree that Comey has seen incredible progress in recent years. We've made great progress in recovering from the bombings, lowering the death toll, and attracting people to live in a great republic. I do not wish to harm any of those advances. However, I believe a new course of action is the right choice for Comey's future. We must not be satisfied with the current status quo, which brings such inequality and chaos to the republic. We must also not adhere blindly to the economic system that creates such inequality within our people and places such heavy restrictions upon the common man. If we are to develop our republic, we must introduce stable democracy, sweeping market reforms, and a greater openness to the outside world. Comey must see greater liberalization in its economy in order to bring about a truly equal society. I call upon the National Assembly to stand for democracy and reform so that a republic may be shining, the shining beacon to all of Russia's peoples. <coughs> Kosygin's speech fits such a prominent and experienced politician. However, his critics ask how exactly how his reforms would bring equality to the common man, and Kosygin's speech was too optimistic and betrayed his tendency to focus too much upon urbanites and intellectualism. Nevertheless, only time will tell if President Kosygin was the right choice for Comey. The people have spoken. And also, like I did set up a lot of the stuff off screen, we have six divisions. We're doing quite well. We have a lot of political power, and with some coffee to keep us here nice and warm. So, we'll see how well we do in Western Russia. If it goes really poorly, well then, that's not great, but, you know, it is what it is. But as we're campaigning, we got to let time go on just a little bit more, so things can blow up a little bit. So we have the right and the critical point. So if you're wondering about the critical point, please go right ahead. It might be just a little bit too late. So, right now. A victory for democracy? After counting every vote, it turns out that the Democrats have received a plurality of the votes. Even more surprising to Comey citizens, it seems that the moderates have decided to go it alone. Without a clear majority of the delegates, the resulting government is destined to be an extremely weak one. If the parties of the center and left to center right have decided to gamble that neither the far left nor far right will dare to cause a vote of no confidence so soon after elections. Perhaps the far left and far right militias will give the government at least a month to live, maybe? Perhaps? We'll see what happens. But let's see, crackdown instability. The right wing and the left wing are currently highly threatening and the center is currently in power. The most likely threat comes from the right wing. Legitimacy, legitimacy will reduce, be reduced by one every single day. That's what we're going to do. And give it a day. And there we go. Legitimacy is super, super important. Increase it by 10, but increases our rate of legitimacy decay. Well, that's why we need all this political power, apparently. Let us attack a police station. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Oh, that's not good. But if we want to go down this route, we will have to go consolidate our power base all the days. Our extremely fragile democracy. <clears throat> If you want to read about this one too, please go ahead. I've read this one before as well. The strength of the centers to put to the test. Now we're going to be gaining legitimacy every day. I don't care how much it costs. It's important to do this every single day so we can get some more. A victory for democracy. Secure the republic. Direct action. How do we get more uh, legitimacy every single day? Let's go this one. Secure the republic. Barring some unfortunate extra legal violence by paramilitaries, the biggest threat to the new coalition government is a simple vote of no confidence by the fascists or communist deputies. Their new government's first order of business is thus to spend every scrap of influence and diplomacy to gather enough confidence and supply agreements to stay afloat for the year. By guaranteeing that the government will not fall while trying to best budget, the moderate coalition hopes to gain some time. <clears throat> very good. And we're going to get one a day, every single day. That'll be very strong for us. Um, it's moderate. Honestly, we could probably do this one. We lose manpower, which I don't like, but we do get some stability, even though we're already at a pretty high percentage. So we want to do that, maybe. There you go. And now, we should be a little higher now. Relatively high, which is good. As long as it's minus one, and we get... Well, just keep it high for now. We should do okay. And now it's high, and then do it some more. That's why we saved our PP. Extremely high? Good. And then the defense plan. The Demo Democratic Coalition will not trust the fascists and communists with a bucket of warm piss, let alone believe their empty platitudes about respecting the minority government for at least a year. As such, extra legal precautions are being taken to make sure that every single member of the government is free from extreme ideology. Equally important is being absolutely certain that no one in the coalition can be blackmailed, lest the ensuing consequences be disastrous. Honestly, at this point, because we did it so well, uh... Increase influence Alexei. 
Yeah, I've already done that quite a few times. I think we're pretty much done with all that. Oh, we can, ooh, Florida St. Georgia. Keep raiding, though. Keep raiding. We like the raiding here. Followed up with the Standing Coalition. But for the survival of the Republic. Alexei Kosygin stares unenthusiastically at the meeting table. It is not the nice warm bed with a glass of warm water he was hoping for, especially after the chaos of the evening. The dossier on his desk covers an unexpected topic, blanketed on the cover like an obscene joke, radicalism and Comey. He flicks through the pages, his frown intensifying at the red names and cancellations on some of the pages evidently taken from the Democratic Coalition's own census rolls. There are quite a few cancellations. Vosnesinski has a smile drip off his face, and he faces the assemblyman with a little more than a ghost of a facial tech. He has at least the courage to be honest, even if what he is saying will make their jobs for harder than before. Morozov spoke to me this evening after the end of the debate. He says some of his men have lost confidence in the coalition. They're writing their letters as we speak, and after tomorrow we will lose about 30, 30 men. These men are, were our majority in parliament. We we'll move to formalize relations with the communists in the passionary party in tomorrow's session. There are still options. We are, after all, the incumbent, and our policies, while leaning on majority rule, are not entirely dependent on it, and after that... He stops, but the meaning in his silence is clear. It is unthinkable. The Democrats have commonly plotting the arrest of their opposition, and yet, perhaps, is a necessary option. Kutsujin rides a tide of opinion. He clears his throat. Collaborate. They're, they might be of use to us. Decreases the influence of the left and right by a lot, large amount. They are radicals. We are incumbents. Ignore them. It increases the center, and it increases everybody else. False charges are easy. Restoring democracy is not. Increase the influence of the center. Um, I like that one too, but we should collaborate. A standing coalition. Even the vaguest assurances that the government is free from outside pressure, internal pressure from within, also needs to be kept in check. When living the life on the thinnest of political edges, a single deputy defecting could have disastrous consequences on the government. And so a generous amount of ministries and positions have to be doled to every coalition partner, with the biggest political party keeping a few choice offices for themselves. Public discontent rises. Uh, we must maintain confidence. If you want to bet that, please go ahead. Against the unrest. If we to survive this avalanche of dissent that's flooded our streets, we need a plan. Currently. <clears throat> We control very little, and the dissidents control a great deal. With this in mind, there are two prevailing ideas we can attempt that would see the situation flip. The first is simply to see the majority of the territory, which will never be able to patrol completely or build up defenses and fortifications and crucial government buildings and factories from there. We can begin sending out combat groups to put down any potential rebellions. The second plan is more effective, or offensive. The idea to send out pacification teams to squash rebel activity in the more rebellious neighborhoods before any dissent can form. Whatever we choose, we must do so quickly. Increase the legitimacy. Send in troops. Incre Ooh, that's not bad. We lose some more manpower. We lose political power. We lose political power anyways. We could use more war support, honestly, so... I will get more war support and stability, which I think... Actually, I'll choose that one, so... And I'm getting more coalition stuff every single day, so they refuse. So, still need a speech. Among the moderate coalition's few blessings is the, the backing of Svetlana Stalina. A charismatic woman is popular both within the democratic factions without the Rakomi's electorate. By having her go on a public offensive against the communists and fascists, some very needing, needed breathing room can be created for the democratic faction. Stalin is already well known for disliking the ideologues and fanatics that impede Comey's progress, yeah. Some within the government worry about the rumors of the young woman's ambition. Many worry that her honeyed words might be, in the end, poison the young republic. In the short term, however, the coalition must play all of its cards. Nice. Very good. Scan for loot as well. Yeah, we're critical, so... <clears throat> Ah, infrastructure reserve, very good. And now we're down here. Great. The spoils of war. Good, good, good. I wonder what's gonna happen up here. How strong they're gonna become? Because playing as Comey sucks. It really does sometimes. <coughs> Excuse me, direct action. Protest against the government. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. <coughs> Silly in a speech. Left unsaid. In the communist and fascist pledges not to overthrow the government democratically, as a danger posed by the paramilitaries, what is a little coup between friends? To prevent such a catastrophe, a small cabal of coalition officials have begun to cook up some extra legal defense of the republic. The communist and fascists fear one and more one another more than they fear the weak minority government. Their surprise at seeing the bench warmers lash out might just be what the coalition needs to survive. And I don't want to read this one yet, so inquire the information. As the fascists and communists plot each other's destruction, the coalition government secret security committee. Uh, security Committee has begun to wrap up its intelligence work. Seslov and Gubileyov are slippery eels, and many of the subordinates fail to live up to their boss's secrecy by bribing small time agents on both sides. A sizable pot of information can be built up on both factions. Speed is of the essence, as a simultaneous strike at both ends. <clears throat> Her speech. I speak to you, from the chamber which all of our careers were made, and as I begin, I urge all of you to remember that your first speech is here. All of us who were once novices in politics thus thrust into the assembly by fate and desperate need. This was an unexpected republic, and we were unexpected republicans. Selena pauses, surveying the crowd. Old instincts kick in, her left flank's a little cold, time to amp it up a little. And who among us does not remember the old years, the arguments we used to have before Vosnesinski 
of Osnevsky brought us into the coalition of opposition, then how about how this republic would be? Who would say or stay in parliament? When a thousand dreams clashed at once, how would we solve the problems of the citizen when our castles and the sky waited to be built? A little after, a rueful almost. It's working. Selena turns back to the main topic. Easy does it, like riding a horse. My point is this. It was not because of their beauty our, of our dreams that we have kept our republic. As a union fractured and the old world died around us, it was not ideals that kept us fed or clothed or safe. Many assemblymen deny it even now, but it was a common belief we are sworn to uphold. The dream of a congress for all, uh, for and of all, working not towards paradise, but towards upwards from the present. And it will not be the dream of Prince Vladimir or Vladimir Lenin that keeps this republic moving forward, but the dream of Vladimir the janitor, Vladimir the factory worker, and the bureaucrat. The common man believes in us, even if many of us no longer do. Man, we have to keep to work, have to work, to keep that faith, by listening and to rep representing them. Extremism doesn't solve problems, friends of the assembly. We do, and if we stop believing that is true, this republic will soon disappear into the bloodshed from whence it was formed. But extremism is a little bit fun. I don't waste of time. Even a few years ago, let's see. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, this is pretty good. Calming the storm. Um... Old Volkova, listen to the chatter of the radio. It's a nice distraction from the constant. Ooh, look at that. Th thrumming hum of a wheat thrusher. And sometimes the stations even play good music. That's about as much as she can ask for these days, and it's not a bad life, all things considered. At least. Selena, the Selena fellow, who's yammering on the radio, is a good orator. She tunes the rusty dial up a little, straining her ears. And it'll not be the dream of the prince, 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 prince. Um, Covenant believes in us. If you wonder about this paragraph, this good head is exactly what I just read. She nods unconsciously. She remembers the old union, one where the flutter of their flags belied the dark hollows of its rule nowadays. The only government functionaries who stop by are the ones who do census taking, which is a breath of fresh air. Really, things have changed, and mostly for the better, haven't they? Extremism doesn't solve problems, as friends of the assembly. We do, and if we stop believing that is true, this republic will soon disappear into the bloodshed from whence it was formed. Volkova found herself clapping for some strange reason as the speech concludes in a roar of applause. And her thoughts straight to the old passport she still keeps in her closet, signed by Volznesinski himself in the old days, perhaps. She'll think about voting again the next time elections come around, and she'll know where the future and her confidence truly lies. A small victory for democracy. Nice. Direct action. The radicals and extremists hold a majority in our legislature and threaten to destroy our democracy. Radical paramilitaries have been mi militarizing and arming themselves at unprecedented levels. The chances of a faction ousting our government are too great for us to remain passive. We must strike against the radicals and remove the fangs. The question is, from which faction do we target? Both the left and the right pose a threat to the republic, but our resources are stretched too thin to shut down both factions. We must choose carefully and determine who's the true enemy of the republic. We're going to go to the right this time, because... The, the decision tab here said that the right is most threatening, so. Surround the neighborhoods. To a casual observer, it might seem like Comey's Republican army is completely compromised, that its officer corps is riddled against, or riddled with Suslov plants, and many of its best regiments crewed by mercenaries of suspect loyalties. And yet, legally speaking, the army chain of command leads to the civilian government at all times. Now that government in, has intel, army units have been arranging crucial neighborhoods around the city. By moving rapidly, it's likely that neither side will have time to use their army contacts before it's too late. Failures against the right. The strike against the right has been severely blunted. Our forces failed to discover the passionaries' primary safe houses, and our forces have failed to discover any significant arms caches. It seems the right have been prepared for our raids, and our attempts to shut them down have failed. It appears that our raids, despite their ineffectiveness, and nonetheless incense several rightist politicians, and the right continue to arm and militarize. It appears our demo democracy's position has grown even less secure, despite our best efforts. Well, that can't be good. Of course not. Why would it be? Into the files. In order to curb the influence of radicals within our republic, we uh, we need information to act upon. The locations of armed caches, incriminating documents, and the positions of mil paramilitary commanders. In order to learn these details, we must raid the HQ of the Communist Party and Shevarevich's passionary. Those locations are public knowledge, and informants within these buildings can help us find useful infotel. While conducting these raids, we have two options for our strategy. The first strategy is to grab only what information our spies can verify so we can avoid any contingency plans and false intel the enemy may have planted. This is a less risky option, but also requires more time to result in less information being gathered. The other strategy is to grab as many files as we can, sort out the contents, and act upon whether whatever useful information we happen to come across. This result in more information being gathered, but it's obviously riskier. And if we come across false intel, our forces could end up stumbling into a trap. The question is, what strategy to employ? Grab only what our spies can verify. We'll do that one. Sorry for now. Sabotage into the roads. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Yeah. It's fine. Still minus one is still very good. No, most likely threat comes from the left wing. Gods of the North. Cool. Nothing but nonsense. A perfect find. 
Oh, it seems we have stumbled across some highly valuable intel. Several documents were discovered detailing the locations of weapon caches, wanted paramilitary commanders, and safe houses throughout the city. The information appears to be up to date, and it seems the radicals didn't expect these documents to be discovered. If we could seize the weapons of commanders, we could cripple the radicals and ensure the safety of our government. We need to act quickly, however, since it will be only a matter of time before the enemy realizes we have received this intel. If we wait too long, all this information will be useless, and we'll have to simply waste our time. Luckily, if we act smart, we can strike the majority of these locations before the radicals, radicals can relocate. Found some good news and preempt the assaults. The telltale sounds of guns and artillery slamming against various points of coming has kept most of the city's inhabitants in hiding indoors. Occasionally, some daredevil wanders out to look for information. The shock communists and fascists have been woken in the middle of the night by armed troops. Both sets of paramilitaries are putting up a violent fight. The cause aided by turncoats within the army. No one knows if the government's gamut is likely to su succeed or fail. I apologize for my mispronunciation sometimes, too. Comey strong and stable. Throngs of suspected fascists or communist sympathizers are being marched to various secure prisons around the city. Shock and dismay cloud the eyes of the defeated paramilitaries, woken in the middle of the night by the toothless coalition government and its soldiers. <coughs> the minority government has somehow succeeded in its mission to crush the far right and far left. Some might worry that the city's democracy will be forever stained by the violent crackdown. These men and women simply fail to see that for the first time since its foundation. Comey's Republic is now strong and stable. No longer shall violence intimidate politicians of the nation. And the decisive blow. The Republican army's forces were moving. The information gained from the radicals would be the decisive blow needed in order to stabilize Comey's democracy. Locations of the armed catchers and wanted paramilitary commanders would be stormed within just a few hours. Hopefully before the enemies could mobilize, the operation would be a multi-pronged attack, with squads being deployed across Sixtive Car and surrounding countryside. Some locations had to be ignored. Due to manpower and resource constraints, but the majority could be struck in a reasonable amount of time. If this operation failed, then Comey's Republic would likely not, likely not last much longer. It was now or never. For democracy, for the Republic. Successful raids. Uh... The Republican forces spread out across Comey, searching for the wanted commanders and armed caches of the radicals have been stockpiling. If the intel was correct, a heavy blow should be dealt with the radicals, and the government's position would have made, been made more secure. The operation was a great success. Using the invaluable intel gathered from the radicals, the Republican forces were able to strike at the perfect moment, catching the radicals off guard. The radicals' paramilitaries were in the midst of mobilizing as the Republican forces opened fire, preventing them from properly arming or establishing a credible force. We've also arrested or killed some of the more experienced paramilitary commanders, crippling the forces' ability to organize. It seems the radicals have been expecting an attack, but our forces must have been prepared faster than they predicted, considering how unprepared the enemy was. Even if we didn't truly possess the element of surprise, we still dealt a huge blow to the radicals' ability to strike against the government. The radicals should be unable to carry out an effective coup. We can breathe a little easier now that our democracy has been secure for now. Democracy stands strong. Wow, look at that. Nice. Wow, minus two every day. Jesus, that's pretty good. Should have went with that one first. But let's get more equipment. And also, here's the social development. We're doing quite well in poverty already. Power tools. Industrial expertise. we got agriculture going. we got some research facilities. We need better basic uh, literacy and such. But that'll come with time. Well, we've got it, my friends. We have got it. Restoring order. The Republic has yet managed to sail out of the most dangerous sea. Yet we're not out of the storm yet, for the internal enemies are still roam within our borders, just as we march to war with external rivals. Caution is the order of the day. Anti-democratic extremists have been severely hurt by repeated losses. As we set out to destroy our regional rivals, we must also keep up the pressure on domestic threats. For this task, we can thankfully bring to the bear the full legal apparatus. Police officers, judges, as well as lawmakers can work in coordination to stamp out poisonous elements. Final victories at home is within our grasp. Once its rears are secured, the army of the Republic will be able to begin its march to restore democracy to all of Russia. All of it. We have paramilitary commanders. Ooh. Mm, make an example. Ban unregistered arms groups. To order. Codify the unwritten rules. Clash of shadows. Bowing to militants. Decreases. Ooh. This conference, huh? A united army to arms. A place for all of us. I kind of want to go to order. Low democracy to arms. I don't know. I kind of want to do this one. Root out paramilitary commanders. The army of the Republic has long been a pit of snakes. Political extremism within the officer corps was impossible to root out without fatally weakening the democratic government's grip on power. Left to their own devices, fascists and communists of officers were free to aid anti-democratic street gangs. Some did so by propagating their doctrines to the rank and files of the army. Others used their tactical training to lead street gangs from the shadows. Finally, some served in the training of paramilitaries. With the far right and far left waning in influence, we can finally remove from service officers and commanders who carry the taint of extremism. The loss of experienced personnel will be worth it as the central government's domestic position is reinforced and the soldiers march out with unity and purpose of purpose to face the enemy. No more shadows. Sixtive Car was breathing again. Locals, or soldiers, were putting down the last fringes of extremist re resistance. Locals were rebuilding from the fighting. The president gave a heartfelt rallying speech outside the assembly earlier this morning. No longer will the left or right threaten an election ever again. This for the center has survived the impossible. Democracy survived a dangerous trial and emerged stronger than ever before. 
Yelena. And you have Gaining set on the stops, steps of the National Assembly, both with shot glasses by their side. Perhaps a little bit unprofessional, but for the occasion, it was worth a potential hangover and scolding. Just like the day in the bar, huh? You have Gaining jokes casually. Your face isn't as red, although perhaps we may need more spirits to deal with the previous chaos, Elena suggests. The two share one genuine hearty laugh. The sun is waking up by this point with a dim glow of selective cars surviving street lamps, fading away to make way for the light. Yep, there is brightness abound and plenty of rebuilding to be done. Elena and Yevgeny stand out facing the city around them. The Republic was safe, and this was an effort helped by them. Every hour, every drop of sweat, every inch of ground has led to this eternal peace. It was worth it for all of them, for all of us. So, friends, are we back to foes across the table? Or across the aisle? Friends, without people like you, even if you're not entirely with me, matter. We promise, after all, the two nod and shake hands and begin to head home. They only wish for a better tomorrow, one with the wounds of the past long gone. The sun will stay over, Siktivkar. Will now say over. Yeah, we'll do that one. The Republic saved. Oh, we need terror bombing gone. Okay, so we got we have some time. That's just that's not bad then. Maybe a little bit of time here. And then they're killing each other too. Nice, very good, very good. Kill each other off, please, please, please. We got the paramilitary commanders, please. Our sources of information. Many ordinary citizens cooperate with extremists, whether out of greed or ideological zealotry. Now, that the judicial system is firmly under our control, and that extremists and politics have been shackled, we can crack down with impunity on collaborators and fellow travelers. The Republic must cast a wide net to arrest all those who contribute to the government's enemies. Those who broke no laws will be intimidated into taking plea deals. Personal finances will be audited. We shall process methodically until all are guilty or all have betrayed their former collaborators. There should be justice for the victims of political violence. For there must be. I like beating this group up a lot, as you can tell. So, um, The remnants of the opposition. After a chaotic period of violence, our faction has been securing control over, Comey, over the Comey Republic and now remains safe from any kind of coup attempt. However, that's not to say our position is stable. <coughs> the lingering remnants of our last political rivals still remain in the country and could potentially cause issues if they're left to their own devices. We have no choice but to take preemptive action. We must find these dissenters before they can take or cause serious damage to our efforts to stabilize the situation. The security forces stand ready to conduct a search on key targets from several opposing factions suspected to have a presence in the country. The base of power will wither away without a strong leader at the reins, so surgical strikes with targeting the head of the dissenting groups is necessary. Once the targets are found, we have a variety of options available for dealing with them. Time's of the essence, however. It is for it is very possible some may try to flee the country before we have a chance to catch up with them. Let's get to work. And for this one, um, just arrest and imprison them. Just go and do all this. Just do the best we can with all that stuff, so... Uh, make an example? Might as well, right? The Republic does not condemn its citizens to death lightly. However, there must be retribution for those who have conspired to end the nation's freedoms and tolerance. Those who have infected a sick with violence must face justice. Those who have robbed their fellow citizens, those who have injured the innocent, those who have killed who have killed under the influence of extremism, all must see their sins weighed and face the risk of the greatest retribution of all. The worst of all, the worst of the worst, shall be executed. We do not have the pity for the traitors, for, and their deaths will hopefully inspire fear among the surviving allies. The Republic's justice is eternal, and its vengeance shall not spare the wicked. Opposition data? Nice. If you want to read about, read about these, please go ahead. Report concludes. Uh, report concludes. Report concludes. Very good. Unspoken differences. <coughs> what is the class of shadows? Oh, this one's... Oh, this hurts us a lot. Recovery is really bad. Holy crap. Revision is not good. Certificate arsenal. Class of shadows is not very good either. But, hate filled his mind and body like waves of pulsating pain. Love Gumilov had left Komi fail or fall. And the passionate would be no more. But not without his guidance, his intelligence, his beliefs. He did not know what would happen to Shaverovich, but he could not say that he cared too much about the man's fate. Gumilev knew that he was the head of Komi's right wing, but now they kicked him out, and he knew exactly why. The serpents, snakes, rats, all of them had caused the downfall of his ideals. He was headed for Ryatka, and he managed to bribe a man into bri driving him to the border and dropping him there. Yet, throughout all the ride, he could not stop thinking about Komi. They had all ruined everything. This grand vision of Eurasia, tarnished. Now Russia would be never again be the center of the world, as it always had its destined to be. And Vyaka was a tsar, unfocused and unguided, a fact that did little to alleviate his anger, as it was only marginally better than the betrayal he found in Komi. There, at least, he would not be put up for a mock trial and executed shortly afterwards, even if given such a privilege back home. When the driver was at... It was almost at the border, he stopped at the sidewalk and demanded his pay, unceremoniously kicking Gumilev out as if he was any other citizen or civilian. If only he was still in the National Assembly and treated as someone who wasn't to be executed on the spot. Commonly politely, Gumilev traveled to the rest of the distance on foot and met no resistance. There was no guard of Komi to stop and frisk him, only the ones of Yak could interrogate him and eventually let him pass. As he did so, a single thought burned in his mind. One day, the fools would realize their mistake and I shall return. Um, if you want to read about these ones, please go right ahead. So, Cal not broken. So goodbye, Bukharina. Bukharina. Opposition data, cool. Report concludes. Sit down of and no more strings. If you want to read this one about um Sislav, please go ahead too. Cool. So they've fled. Sergei is opposing oh resistance or government. Shaverovich, Serov. 
Quincy Donov. Yeah, might as well just do them all. Launch operations gets all of them. And I just want to kill these guys off. They refuse tribute. Nice. Um, even if there's no one there, do we get still get army XP? Oh, look at that lag. Because Germany is exploding. Which means the Luftwaffe terror bombings are going to stop very soon. Which means we're going to need more divisions to do well here. Yeah, we are slowly getting more army speed. Nice. And so it begins, my friends. They're looking... Oh, they've only a militia... Oh, I'm feeling so bad for them right now. Oh, well. <clears throat> I want to get this division over there so we can see what's going to happen with them. The bombing stop. If you're worried about that, please go right ahead. Clear skies, dark clouds, good times. Good times. As my voice decides to crack a whole bunch. Come on, how long are you going to take Hans Spidel? Oh, Hans. Oh, Hans and Himmler. Man, you guys take forever. I know it's over a river, but still. <coughs> English Civil War, very good. Oh, look at that. Oh, there are two divisions. Ain't too proud to hide. Well, if you wonder about Zidane, please go right ahead. Rotten luck for him. Halfway to Divina. If you wondering about this one too, it's Borisov. Please go right ahead. Goodbye, Serov, and happy are the persecuted. Goodbye, Taborutsky. Goodbye. At the service, nothing is sacred. Right, Shevardovich. Nice. And we actually ended up with more political power than we started with. So, um, to order, I remove a place for all of us. Honestly, you know this organization stability. That's not bad for a lot more political power. I'm gonna wait to do that one then. Um, we could use more guns, probably, honestly. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. The Republic's saved, though. Rejoice, citizens, for the Republic has been saved. It's taken our government everything to prevent our young nation's fall into extremism, but now that the dust has begun settling, our political system has been repaired, and we stand united to face against the wider world. Soldiers and leaders that have once only been concerned with surviving just another week are now free to turn towards the rest of Russia. With the end of the anarchy, many factions will no doubt attempt to impose a control on the lands of the former USSR. Our Republic must stand ready to expand outwards in order to crush extremists and find new allies for our fledgling nation. We have crushed the fascists and communists and Komi, and this experience shall serve us well. So this is stuff, um, this stuff is pretty much done. Fled, arrested, in prison, arrested, in prison, arrested. So we're, we're done with this one, so. Ah, look how much we beat them up. I love it. There go the militia. Goodbye, sir. Good. See, is all we can use. Absolutely. Assemble the armories. Oh, that'd be actually really good to get. Infrastructure. Ooh, infrastructure will be good. Let's get this one. Civil armies. With the end of political violence, many armies and weapon caches that were under the control of the extremist elements are now open to access. It will take some time to cut everything, but already the available rifles and support equipment can be pressed into service to help further the Republican army even further. Securing as many weapons as possible will also help us douse the embers of political extremism. The days of private militias holding onto weapons stockpiles are finally coming to an end. From now on, the government shall decide who has access to military hardware, and that's that. Actually, you're still independent for now, because these guys absorb one of these guys... And the WRF uh, uh, kills off the other one, usually. <coughs> Infrastructure programs. Now that the map of Siktokar no longer resembles a chessboard of districts held by a pro protean mass of paramilitaries of varying allegiances, we're free to rule out unified infrastructure plans, places where the government has not dared to send officials. And ages can finally be assessed, improved, and perhaps even taxed, which is very good. The least controversial move will be to improve the infrastructure in and around Siktokar. Troubling roads and buildings do not inspire much hope that the government is looking after the common man. Nor are they much up uh, to an economy attempting to climb out of years of stagnation, which is also very true as well. God, I just want to raid more. I want to raid more, man. Just raid, 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 raid. Yakov did very quite, quite well there. And there goes South Africa. Yay. No one else wants to loot us yet? That's fine with us, but still. We'll see what happens. Actually, when is the next research done? In about three weeks. Three, four weeks. About within four months we'll get... Four months, four weeks, we'll have everything, both of them done, so. Equipment's going up quite quickly. And Kostajin is looking like he's got a lot of work to do, so. And, so, and we also have a power vacuum here, too, unfortunately, but whatever it is, what it is. Infrastructure programs, the Army of the Republic, we probably want to focus on our, our army quite a bit. Yeah, we're probably going to need to do that, so. Alright, let's actually do schools, just because I've not done that one yet for this campaign, but the Army of the Republic. Komi has always had, on paper at least, a strong army. Since its inception, the Republic has remained free from foreign encroachment by the quality of soldiers in that field. 
This has not always been evident to the man in the Sictive Guard streets, riddled with corruption and factionalism, with entire units either underpaid or overpaid to ensure political reliability. The Army of the Republic has always been perceived as a right mess. The, a significant fraction of its total strength is composed of militias and men outside the regular command structure, fighting only in dire emergencies now that the Republic desires to expand outward. A more regular state of affairs is needed. Two proposals have been brought up or thought up on the Army reforms, and it's important to decide rapidly on which one the Republic prefers. The New Republican Army Commander Leon. He, Leonti stares doubtfully at his map. The plastic waterproofing has gone so worn in place that interpreting the little dots he had drawn on it is a pointless exercise. And the woods around him swarm with mist, obscuring the stars he'd normally use for his navigation. The compass is no help either. Half the darn compass and HQ barely works anymore, and this only one has given up the ghost ahead of his schedule. Darn the stupid impromptu exercise, Sergeant Kuzmin snarls. Always a loyal follower, but never quite afraid to let his superiors know what he thinks. Leon. Leonti doesn't reply, staring only at the mist. There are some boundaries that it would be thoroughly inappropriate to cross. The sanctity of command is one of them. As he glares into the mist, something clicks. So his faint figures aren't trees, they must be nearby hills. And if he can make out the hills, then he scrambles at his map, checking the faint contour lines. Uh, if he's lucky, he can get the shape of two landmarks down, like that one shaped like a loaf of bread in the lo Elong Ridge. Leonti is a grown man of 37 years, and he's been in and out of barracks for his entire adult life. It takes all he has to keep himself from sobbing. He knows for the first time in eight hours where he is going. His salary and Kuzmin's are safe. Leonti and Kuzmin stumble into the finishing grounds. Five hours after that misty hill, they are among the 3,000 commanders of a total of 7,200, who will survive without ejection from the Republican army of Komi. But as the army retools and rebuilds itself, it begins to look less like a rabble, more like a fighting force, and it prepares to cast aside the boring, easy business of border defense for far, far larger horizons. A magnificent display. There's much to be learned here. I'm going to go with a magnificent display, because we need the um, manpower. But we are doing... Reform a true army. The first faction proposes scrapping every militia and integrating their men into the regular army. This will be a daunting undertaking, stretching our current army structure to the breaking point. Countless militia men will have to be screened for ex political extremism, and those who don't make for the cut will no doubt be angry at losing the job and weapons. Completing the reform will take time and effort, but as the WRF has demonstrated in the 50s, our regular army can achieve miracles when properly organized. The Republic must end the militias if it is to be safe internally and externally, so we get more manpower and Armed professionals will rapidly begin to improve. We could have done to keep the militia structure for more manpower and war support, but it will slowly improve and I prefer rapidly. We could have done popular mobilization to get even more manpower, but oh well. Elevate gifted officers. Dozens of smart and dedicated men have joined our army from our from their former militias, and Comey's have a competitive period of political instability. One did not rise to the top without a good head on their shoulders. The integration of these men has done much to soothe the concern of former militiamen about more purges than the rest of the militias. It has also brought us a treasure of institutional experience. Veterans have fought in the West Russian War or helped defend Komi as auxiliary militias are now pouring into our border or pouring into our army and help bring re redefine its doctrines for the better. Which is good. And we're still waiting for the militia to get over there so we can beat the crap out of them. Also, we need to get an investment on the guns, which we're looking okay. So let's go and get some improved infantry rifles, which would be good. Very good. Mission to Volokta. To the west, General Ivanov maintains a careful position of armed neutrality in Volokta, in the aftermath of the front's collapse. The good general decided that spilling the blood of Russian civilians for ideological squabbles was simply not worth it. Volokta has kept, kept, kept up cordial if bemusing relations with Komi's unstable republic. The western junta has long appreciated Komi's policy of welcoming all while disliking the resulting political violence. With the newly minted democratic government standing proud, it might be time to revisit the relationship. Komi and Volokta both face external threats from the front and from the southern regimes. A diplomatic mission has thus been sent to Volok to offer a treaty of peace and friendship between both nations. Nice. Uh, we love beating the crap out of our enemies, don't we? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Treasure! Yay, you got more political power, which is great. Even though this Alexander guy is not very good, but whatever. Pietro Gregorenko is very good, though. Which is awesome. And now we're researching the next two for land auction, of course. But also support weapons. So, not bad. Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot, lot worse. So, overall, yeah, we're doing actually okay. Oh, we're also mobilizing more, I guess. We have a four-year draft and warlord recruitment as well. So, to effective total manpower modified to 152%, which is very nice. So, we'll have to wait and see what happens with these guys. So, rapidly is, means three, which is not great, but I'd rather take it than not have it. So, we're on widespread cronyism. We want public or political interference next. Which would not be bad. Oh, so they sucked on these guys. That makes sense. These guys were pretty weak anyways, but still. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Popular mobilization and alliance for peace. I'd love I'd love if they went, went with us. We stand alone. Oh. Alright, Jean. Alrighty. Agriculture methods next. Yeah, that'd be good. All I hope to God we can stand up to other people. Uh, let's get more, more attack. Who's really good attack? Yvonne. Yeah, I guess we'll go with Yvonne for now. Alright. I think the opposition, of course, is done, like we said earlier, before we faded and faded out. And yeah. 500 some peepees, not bad. 
Mission to Vlog Dump. Eh, these guys are doing okay here, too. Brazil's 100 days. Cool. Mission to Vlog Dump. They accept a request. Great news comes from, from the city of Vologdo, across the frontier. A diplomatic mission from which we recently employed has been great, great success. It seems that the regime ruling the town is supportive of our efforts to create a bilateral relations. Has welcomed the mission with open arms. For now, we can initiate trade resources and arms for the benefit of both us and Vologdo, as well as discuss our future steps, now that the talks with them are not a rare occurrence, but a possibility every single day. We must not forget the goals of the diplomatic effort to not stop at minor trade deals and vaguely cordial relations. The optimal outcome will be for Kalmi and Vologdo to enter to a full alliance, determined to protect themselves from the surrounding enemies that may appear. They may be socialist monarchists or fascists, but no matter what, the two states will have to band together to fight them off. Of course, if we gain enough diplomatic sway, we can even use this to our advantage in expanding, but for now, our ambassador is doing excellent work at cooperating with the authorities and gaining their trust, just as planned. If you want to worry about these, please go right ahead. Enemies on all sides, which wouldn't be too bad for defense of core territory, but expand emergency conscription would be very good, well, for some parts, and then watch and wait, but <clears throat> unless repeats, if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Establish economic ties. Freedom of movement, economic ties. As Vlog and Kobe get closer, their respective economies continue rising from the decade of bombing and warlordism. Trade links that had already been significant during the anarchy are being strengthened by the day, and this light is essential for official trade policies to be established between the two allies. Strategic industries from both sides will be integrated, helping both Kobe and Vlog to increase their military readiness. Joint investments schemes have also been discussed to help lift up the civilian economy of both nations. And freedom of movement. It's a good thing I never rated Vlogdo too, but the frontier between warlords and Russia is often more of a theoretical concept, consisting of a long range of military checkpoints and demilitarized zones plagued by bandits of lawlessness. While in theory there have been no law prohibiting movement between Vlogdo and Komi, in practice, doing so requires several levels of military approvals for private citizens. Traders have long been used to carry their stacks of documents at military checkpoints. A new treaty is in the works, providing legal rights to Vlogdo and Komi's citizens across the board unimpeded. This will no doubt help friendship and partnership blossom among our nations. <clears throat> And there goes Croatia, nothing there. Honey, the opposition, of course, nothing there. Uh, world of development, uh, I'm not going to bother with this one. That one, so. We'll see what happens with uh, the WRF. I hate fighting them so much. I hate them and Samara. Vyaka is not too bad sometimes, but... Also, I'm trying to make another military division. We just... I need another military factory. We really do. Support equipment is looking very good, though. And mutual defense. While the Logda may not be totally ready to join any of our future wars for liberation, their generals have agreed to strong mutual defense treaties in the event of an attack on one side. The other is expected to declare war on the invaders. This defensive alliance will free up much needed resources for Komi's Republican army. Contingency plans for defensive wars will no longer be used the hypothesis that the Komi Vologda frontier requires constant military defense. Likewise, the Vologdan army will be free to tend to its own business, confident in the safety of its eastern flank. I wouldn't mind beating up these guys, but we're St. George. They don't have any loot. No, oh, that sucks. These guys do, but I don't know how strong these guys are, and I don't want to sacrifice our guys just yet, so. I have a feeling we're going to have to fight these guys first, which is going to suck, but whatever. <clears throat> whatever. Yeah, they still have no loot, which is fine, but not really. But at least this is improving at all levels, so that's pretty good. I just want to get this one first so that we can guarantee each other. So, oh, that's nice. Military access. Just so it makes it easier for both of us. Between their foes. Citizens, my friends, our republic is in grave danger. To the north lies the remnants of the Soviet Union, haunted by its failures and angry at our independence. Even as we speak, the Northern Red Army plots are undoing. And I apologize for this, but we gotta get this next. <clears throat> to the south and east, things are not any better. Deluded Tsarist remnants wish to turn back the clock and reimpose the shackles of our autocracy, of autocracy, on our free citizens. In this project, they resemble our eastern neighbors in Gaini. A theocracy blames Russia's woes not on the evils of German fascism, but on the anger of an unforgiving god. These madmen believe that only by subjugating Russia to the church's whim will the people be saved. The Republic rejects this madness. It's not a cabal of communist or tsarist military officers that can free Russia. Nor can its salvation come from subservience to crazed monks. The only power strong enough to free Russia is its citizens. We must be on our guards. Extract from the President Alexei Kosygin's speech to the Republic. Since we have the bonuses, we might as well get all this stuff as fast as possible. Uh, scavenge for loot, you might as well. Uh, Order St. George. I mean, we could try that, I guess. We'll see, I guess. <clears throat> Hopefully we can do well against these guys. I would like to do this one more time. Uh-oh, peace conference. What is this? Oh, the UK, or England, I should say. <coughs> my apologies for my coughing. Oh, my goodness. Yes, good. Between the foes. Three foes. Execute plan blue. Should we pay? Hey, good job, guys. Thank you for seeing reason. 
And go back now. Until we get raided by some other people, too. Um, pass by the territory. Slightly decrease the scoring time. Oh, we'll see what happens here. So, between three foes. Um, I want to wait until we get some something there to tell us, like, oh, we're actually going to do this. We're going to do that. Please, Vlogda, please accept that we want to annex you. They, okay, they uh, vote to join Comey. Celebrate citizens of Comey today. Vlogda joins our republic. The offer for merging the administrations has been welcomed by the semi-authoritarian government in Vlogda. It seems they still believe in democracy, and as such, they quickly answered our request with a positive response. Quickly, the two militaries ended all limitations to travel between their respective territory, and are working to tear down any border fences or checkpoints. The soldiers near the border have come together, celebrating the unification and meeting their Russian brothers that are no longer enemies on the other side. Meanwhile, representatives from the military regime we recently united while have arrived in a sixth car, outlining the exact plans and process for the proper integration of their lands into the republic. In the streets of both our own capital and Vologdo, the citizens cheer on our government, and the flag of our nation is waved proudly across our domain. This is truly a day of glory. If you want to read about Plan Blue and pass by the territory, please go right ahead. This actually would have been really nice to do, but negotiate with Vologda. It's time to revisit our relationship with our western neighbor. Our first visit to Vologda at the dawn of the Unification Wars was mainly concerned with the military matters, for our young republic was surrounded on all three sides with dangerous regimes. Now that Komi stands tall, we must ask Vologda's government about deeper integration. The men of Vologda are famous for their opposition to wars of aggression against fellow Russian citizens, and now we ask them for help in a grim unification of Western Russia. No matter how they felt about us before, the fusion of our two nations is a difficult decision for Vologda's leadership, but Russia, along divided, must unite again. We can only hope that our neighbors understand this and merge the institutions. Today is a glorious day, for Vologda has agreed to peacefully fuse with our government and nation. Soldiers that used to belong to the two nations have crossed the border not in conflict, but in celebration as politicians and commanders meet to discuss how to best merge both sets of institutions. Battles will be fought not between brothers, but between conflicting bureaucratic standards as torrents of inks are spilled instead of blood. Paper pushers of both nations have spared verbally, or sparred verbally, while inwardly cheering at the peaceful nature of this conflict. And outside, people celebrate the good news of the new republic, which is awesome. Okay, whew. Yeah, they're looking mighty thick over there, and I don't like how thick they look. Oh, wait, oh, ooh, ooh. oh, we only have a militia division. I'd rather have a militia division, an extra militia division, than not have another militia division, which we'll convert later on, but... Uh, now we're still out of artillery, which sucks, but whatever. My apologies for speaking a little bit too fast, and defense stratagems. The work that began during the earlier reforms of the Republican Army is now complete. The Army's commanders have presented to the civilian authorities several military plans, as well as new doctrinal recommendations. This doctrinal ideas will help us modernize our army and train a new generation of soldiers and officers. The military plans provide a wide range of military campaigns against neighboring threats to the Republic's safety. It's likely that the civilian leadership will bring a few recommendations of its own, nevertheless. Both generals and politicians are confident in the Republic's, Republic's capacity to destroy its closest foes. Very nice, my friends. Very, very nice. <clears throat> Indeed, Allah is the most forgiving. The merciful. Good, good, good. How many days do we have left? Two days, that's not bad. We get every unit leader. Oh, South African War. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and there goes Kennedy. But look, oh my gosh. That's a lot more than I thought we'd get. <gasps> we actually, oh, we got the divisions too. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, this is, this is probably one of the best times I've ever played Komi. Probably. Go ahead and integrate them. We need that. Um, since we're here anyways, occupy territories. Switch to... Well, local autonomy would not be bad either. And go to... Ooh. Which... Ooh. Um, actually, this one's not bad. Garrison. Yeah. That's actually pretty good to do. Honestly, with these divisions, that's not worth it. I'd rather train these divisions. Or actually... Yeah, actually, we were using some of these guys. Um, because they're infantry, and they have a lot more stuff there, but... Uh, honestly, these guys are not too bad themselves. That does save a little bit more. You're all normal infantry, so... Pack Hot Naya Division? It's probably a bad idea, but... Now we're gonna be really out of supplies, so you might, you can get rid of that one then. Honestly, with 12 divisions, I don't want to lower this one too much more, because um, we're gonna be out of equipment a lot. Actually, except for infantry equipment, that's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Fill the gaps. Uh, every eventuality has been planned. Every threat has been assessed. The Republic, surrounded by enemies, has turned every settlement into a castle to protect the flame of freedom and democracy. Now citizens must become warriors to fill the gaps in their defenses, lest the enemy storm through. A final call to arms has been issued. Less fit men can serve in the interior. Farmers can join regional auxiliary militias to support the Republican army. If our nations survive the dar this darkest hour, we must stand and fight to arms, citizens to arms. Execute plan black. Ooh. Plan white. Honestly... 
Hmm. I think we're just gonna go bomb rush him. Execute plan red. The times have been long, so the seeds of conflict within our nation, and for this they shall reap the tempest. The front has squandered its opportunity to save Russia from the fascists, and its arrogance, Angles, has not sought peaceful reunification with us, but has sent instead thugs and radicals to undermine our democracy. We've expelled the communist threat from our republic, and now the Republican army shall eradicate the red menace from Western Russia. If we can get these guys done, no, hatred has died, or got left, but if we can get these guys settled first, and then we can just focus on the center and south, I think that'd be good. So, um... We don't have that much manpower, do we? We do have 12 divisions, so I'm feeling, honestly, not too bad about this at all. You guys are... Oh, uh, yeah. You guys can go. You guys can go, too. Hope you guys are ready. Because we have... We have quite the army. We really do. And using the, we have motorized now, which I don't assume is very good. 10 count. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great. But whatever. So after this one, we have to be at peace with us, right? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do and state weapon regulations. The proliferation of weapons in the Republic has done much to let our enemies operate without fear of retaliation. When a police action against a far-right contraband ring runs the risk of a violent gunfight against the equivalent of a platoon of soldiers with automatic rifles, hitting political criminal gangs hard becomes possibly, impossibly difficult. The central government will introduce the first ever weapons regulation laws to the Republic. The law will explicitly ban the position of ma many of the heavy weaponry. Equally, under target will be automatic weapons as well as large magazines. We will use this law as both a carrot and a stick. Extremists will be able to sell their weapons in the government and buy back if they wish to qu quit politics. And those who hold on to their illegal weapons will be breaking the law and thus be easy to arrest. You going after guns? What? You going after my guns? No, no, no. Ooh, nice. I'd love to do this right now, but we are literally about ready to go to war, so... Honestly, yeah, let's wait for that one. Honestly, with this stuff, max spending would be nice. But it's, the rest of the stuff is not super important right now. I completely ignore the industry too, so. Uh, let's get some more output. No, it's not even output. That's just military construction. Uh, I prefer the other one. Base? Ah, 2% is not bad for base. Actually, no. You get more base. You get more factory output for this one, though. Eh, we'll keep going this way. Why not? And once these guys are dead, we'll go to war with these guys then. Oh! They're in Brother and Viactors are going to kill each other right now. Nice. Honestly, you might as well just do that, and we'll just try to encircle. Oh, they, oh, they went to war with these guys. Good. Good. Hope these guys can keep it up for at least a, a week or two, max. That's all we're really going to need, because we've got to move fast. The Yaka might go to war with us sometime, so we got to move. we got to be blazing here. Oh, boy. A little bit of lag. How many more days do we have to wait for to integrate these guys? About a month. Literally a month. Uh, oh, oh, come on. Well, if you're wondering about that one, please go ahead. God dang it, that sucks. Now we go to war with them. Hopefully, we get, my goal is to encircle these two divisions. So, why don't you go here to here to here? Um, you guys go to here. Keep these guys in place. That's the most important thing right now. You guys are gonna go up through here and go boom boom. You should be able to move very quickly through that. Where are our, our IFBs? Oh, you're attacking. That's fine. Go go go. Oh, look at that. These guys have been destroyed. You are gonna hold. You're gonna come over the river and go up through here here here. That is the most important thing to do right now. Just make as many instruments as you possibly can. If we lose a few divisions here and there, whatever. Doesn't matter. Go, 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 go. Our arrival of the Anti-Communist Guard. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Even the smallest count helps. Yes, absolutely. Good. Go into because they won't be able to do anything. But, ban unregistered armed groups. Beyond limiting access to weaponry, the government will also legislate paramilitaries out of existence. Outside of the army of the Republic, the police, as well as a few state-backed militias, belonging to a group that will be in a criminal offense. Those who cling to the paramilitary membership will be arrested on terrorism charges. Those who resist will be shot. The designation of all those, these organizations as terrorist groups will allow us to hit their finances, serving them out of money. Violent competition need not, and every one of them, as a dwindling money and prestige of paramilitary sees these groups hemorrhaging members and, of course, morale. Good. The center's doing great. Over here, obviously, is not as good. But I don't really care, to be honest. Philly beat left in Chile. Cool. All right, whatever. It's just taking time to get over here, over the river, which sucks so much. You actually won there. Nice. Great. Oh, having motorized is so beneficial. Holy crap. Go up here. You guys go that way. Come on, motorized. Move faster, 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 faster. I don't care that we're losing men in these attacks. I really don't. Because now that you're over here, you should be able to move very quickly through this stuff. You're just literally here to keep them all in place. That's literally it. Come on, get to me, Kun. Come on, why are you taking so long? Come on, move, 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 move. Nice. 
And even though this is only militia, it doesn't matter to me. You just hold back. Um, actually, you can leave this a little bit more open so you don't get encircled yourself. So, yeah, head on back. Ah, oh, they're, they're trying to move around as well. Nice. Smart for them, but still. Oh, they're doing force defense, maybe. You guys go here. You can encircle that division as well. So, um, to order. For as long as we have called Tiktokar our home, our rivals have mocked Komi's Republic as a house of cards, top and rebuilt by ideologues constantly, its streets red with blood of the slowly dying government. No more. We brought the peace and order to the Re Republic. Political extremism has been quelled, and peace and just are the order of the day. So my question Komi continuing to call itself a place for all. In light of the squad extremism, we stand by the statement for all are welcome into the house of governments who respect its institutions. Secret hospitality is a two-way obligation. Being now rid of those who would threaten order others in our midst, we can continue to work on making the Republic a refuge for all Russians in this age of strife. Go, go, go. The most important thing is to encircle and destroy. Yes. Oh, we got him. Holy crap. That was probably one of the easiest times I've ever done that. But Viak is next. Oh, we got... Oh, we actually made another division. Cool. And just go ahead and integrate these guys if we can. Um, at the Communist Guard. Honestly, Viaka might be the group we want to raid. Honestly, we might not even need to raid anymore. Let's get... Uh, we could, maybe. We'll see what happens. Ooh, or we could raid these guys. Vorkuta, yes. That'd actually probably be the best solution right now. Alright, let's give you more guns, get more soft attack and such. Just go and integrate these guys. The faster we integrate them, the better. 70 days takes so long, but whatever. Vorkuta, yes, yes. Execute plan white, which we probably want to do next, honestly, so... It is perhaps to the Tsar's credit that he has come back to Russia rather than live a comfortable soft life in exile, but the fall of the Soviet Union has seen the rise of a new generation of Russians, men and women who do not idolize the fabled past of Russian autocracy. The Tsar and his cronies wish not for citizens, but for slaves and subjects, object in their subservience. The Republican army will instead show them the strength of the Russian nation, for these difficult times have forged a new generation of standard bearers for democracy and decency, which we will get to next, after we, of course, we want to raid these guys. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. Actually, it doesn't even matter. We will smash through these guys as... Pretty pretty quickly, probably. Yeah, they're they just know the numbers, so which is fine with us. Let's go with uh, workers. I'll go with research. Why not? Thirteen divisions. Can Viaka stand up to a army? I hope the answer will be no. Let's go research. Yes. Food for hungry. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. To order, my friends. Plan red. Oh, oh, that did that definitely helped. Attack and defense definitely did help. So. We're looking, honestly, pretty darn good. Like, this is one of the easiest times I've played through Komi so far. With Vologda here and getting extra factories and extra divisions. Oh, I wish it opens, opens, happens every single time. I really do. we got plenty of guns. Holy crap. We need more anti-tank, though. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> We're playing a white. Followed up with peace for now. Well, maybe not peace for now, but whatever. Oh, Gorky. Cool. Perhaps... Just a passing dream, the streets of our capital quiet for once. A few families are seen walking about where once slugs ma man barricades and checkpoints. The police reports echo this anomaly. Peace seems to have descended on sective car. A fragile peace, perhaps, for the demons of civil strife might return if not vigilant. A fragile peace if arrivals in Western Russia try to end our democratic experiment. A peace, nonetheless, and one we intend uh, to define by force. Viratia, wow. Citizens, much remains to be done. We must be vigilant so that our nation's future is not dashed against the rocks of war nor the chaos of internal conflict. Oh. We have another division. Nice. And it's militia, but whatever. We'll convert all of our guys eventually. Um, yeah, this is the division we want to use for the most part right now. And they're not bad, actually. If we have enough guns, really. We don't, we don't have enough anti-tank, obviously, but... <clears throat> Maybe these guys 20 combo with would be probably in our best interest, too, eventually, so... We're going to go straight on in. Where is... Oh, good. You're right here, which is great to encircle these guys. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Oh, look at all that lag. Let's go, go, go. Peace for now. Nice. You guys go in here. Uh, you guys go here and do that. Nice. Oh! Oh, we just encircled them. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, getting Velocta is... Wow. Just wow. That's all I can say. It's just wow. Never played wow, but hey, maybe someday. Igra. Come on, motorized, you're taking forever to move around here. The capital is completely surrounded. And the capital will fall very soon. Nice. 
focus and circle them, circle them, circle them, peace for now. A new democratic foundation. The Republic, once seeing its electoral system frayed and closing down due to extremism, must see democracy flourish again. Regenerating the interest and trust of our citizens have, have in the democratic process will be tough, especially coming on the tail end of our efforts to end political extremism once and for all. We must accomplish this nevertheless, if the democratic center's power is to be sure. Letting go of our power to design electoral districts now that they've been sanitized will help restore confidence, as will the ability to call snap elections to remove governments that are widely unpopular with electorate. Finally, propaganda campaigns extolling the virtue of engaged citizens will hopefully draw crowds once more to polling stations. I captured the plant. Nice. Oh, we're actually getting attacked, which is not good, but whatever. That sucks. But that's okay. Um, that's a case. Come over here. Go straight to Perm, if you can. Nice. Hang out here first, maybe... Plan red is over, but it's fine, whatever. Why are you all moving that direction? Just go here. Why, you, why did you all abandon this area? Come on. Come on, go in. It's okay, just go in. You guys hold here. Kongar? Yeah, go in first. Cut them off completely. The southern portion off, at least. Oh! Shnike! Jesus Christ, this is so much easier than it was before. Holy crap. You're getting vlogged is a really good idea. Uh, people's, ooh, that might be difficult. You know what? We could try it. Integrate them. Oh, we integrated. Oh, look at that. We, look at the map we have. Foundation for Democratic Russia. Very good. Room to breathe. Our enemies all lie defeated. Their former people mill around. Some feel relief at their liberation. Others struggle to make sense of the defeat of the Tsar, communism, or fanaticism. Our soldiers' sacrifices earn us room to breathe. Beyond our border look more dangerous. Ambitious tyrants dreamt of subjugating all of Western Russia to their whims. For now, however, we have some time to consolidate. Our enemies have held a great amount of industrial equipment, war supplies, and population. Already, the Republic has gone from one of the weakest factions to one of the most powerhouses of Western Russia. As soldiers have been allowed some rest, our poor bureaucrats are working triple overtime to somehow integrate mountains of resources into a system not designed for population and territory of that magnitude. As the work progresses, our integration of these new assets will give us a significant edge in the upcoming wars. Actually, for this, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and just make them 20 combo with motorized, because they are they can be quite strong, and I want to make sure we reward these guys quite appropriately. So, engineers too, thank you. We have enough army speed for that, and we'll change you guys up later anyway, so... Ensuring democracy. The first villager to see deputies sweeping, sweeping the streets is a child of perhaps of 10 or 11 years. His steps echo down the cobblestone path well before reaching the sweating, uh, suit clad man struggling with a uh, broom. He stops in for a while for whatever passes for a stupefaction in the youth and makes a face and walks away. The deputy calls after him, Have a good day. The government is here for you if you need anything. The next few villagers arrive at all once, in a station wagon almost falling apart with rust and disuse. The deputy calls out to them too, shouting, Have a good day, the government of Comey works only for you. Meter laughter resounds from the car's cab, and a face reaches out from what must once must, 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 must once have been a window. Have a good day, deputy, must be a lonely day in the office, yes? The deputy beaming turns to reply, but the station wagon's low growl cuts him off before he can say anything. He looks into the massive cloud of smoke, still smiling, carries on, so it continues through the morning. The sweeping of stray leaves in the urban garbage of Comey's 57th district into giant piles, and the disposal of these piles into burlap sacks. People stare curiously. Once or twice, visitors ask for signatures, something which the deputy is only too happy to provide, as always. He reminds people he makes to vote and keep the government accountable, something which they can also fulfill by writing to himself. As noon towers over the Comey, the deputy stumbles into his office, nearly tripping over the carpet. The smile disappears from his face, glowering. He begins to laboriously type a transcript of his day's endeavors, starting with the number of people he has greeted, and the number of we believing the Comey Republic badges he has given up. Nearly breaking in the typewriter with his hammy fingers, he writes, Day 1 Public City Campaign Complete. Italian Levant. Partition? What? I, will peace last? What do you mean? What is this? Governor not. We have the Re Republic of Israel. Have I ever seen this? I don't think I've ever seen this one happen before. The government of Levant, but we have Israel here, social democracy here. Will peace last? Remember, of course, is gone, but okay. They're not even connected in Galil, but whatever. Room to breathe, followed up with what? Unto unity. Plan red, white, and black were about sheer survival. Now, a Republic turns its eyes to the south and seeks not only to survive, but to thrive. Projecting military power to squash dangerous warlords will greatly enrich our legitimacy, prestige, and resources on top of keeping us safer. Our general's plans are not as detailed this time around, mostly based on psychological profile of our enemies and theoretical conflicts using pre anarchy maps of Russia. As such, much of our newly acquired resources will be used to deal with whatever warlords last long enough to become one of our neighbors. Nice. Weapon improvements? Get more land out of tech, man. The fate of Yaka's generals. If you want to about this, please go right ahead. Oh, great! Destroy them in their positions? You know what? Let's release them and destroy their positions. They can join us. Let's be nice with them for now. For now. Room to breathe. 
Not to Unity. So if you're wondering about Plan Silver, please go ahead and Plan Gray. And of course, was it Plan Green? Yeah. And Plan Violet. I think Tartar Stan's already gone. Negotiate with Tartar Stan. Plan Yellow. And negotiate with them too, so. Consolidate gain resources? Probably will. Most of our foes in southwestern Russia have been defeated. The Republic stands triumphant once more. While the flood of new lands administers not exponential growth seen at the end of Plan Red, white and black, integrating our new conquests into the Republic has taken time. Now that our armies are taking a well-earned rest, it's once again time for our public servants to wander into these new territories and catalog everything. Uh, industrial plants, cities, mines, and population centers, all important resources for a growing nation. All this wealth is fed back into the Republican army, covering up equipment and manpower losses, and giving our men new weapons. On the horizon, new enemies. Our men must be equipped for any eventuality. Timur alone. Oh, well. Wait, did this batch carry? No, they're, they're all gone, so. There you go. Plan yellow. Two? Cool. Yeah, cool. Two more alone. Um. A freezing wind blew in Archangos as a man in an admiral's uniform walked through its currently mostly empty streets. Between nightfall and the relatively new occupiers of the city, most people wanted to remain indoors for the time being. The man couldn't blame them. Uh. Uh, Russia was certainly going through a scary time, and it was hard to trust any government after what some of them had been said to treat the people they had ruled. Still, the people said it was nice to have an ex of actual poor change, and he put it to good use, or his name was in Timur Gaidar. Something in the corner of his eye caught his attention, and he turned to get a better look at it. It was a book somebody had abandoned on the ground, and Timur picked it up to read the title. He barely avoided dropping the book when he did. It was a book Timur and his squad, the last written work of his father, Arkady, had ever made. It had become a widely cherished children's book in the areas of Russia still controlled by communists, and even among the communists in Siktikar. It was a story of a young communist boy named Timur, and his friends helping the Republic and furthering the revolution in any way he could. And it was all based on him. Timur Gaidar had once been the very boy that Arkady Gaidar had modeled the Timur book off of. And it's an incredible thing about how long ago it had been published. 1940, a year before the invasion. He had been a young boy then, an eager Bolshevik, following in his father's footsteps. Now he served his, pe his people. His father would angrily declare traitors to the revolution. Ah, revolution, what a joke. The revolution, the war, what they had been worth. They just made his father waste his life and die needlessly. If the path Timur took now was a betrayal of that revolution, if it made his father turn over in his grave, then so be it. Let the past bury the past and look ahead to the future. But... Let's go ahead and do this one. Ensure industrial preparedness. Building an industrial economy from the ground up using factories taken over in wars of conflict is not a precise science. Many factories that fail or fall into our hands are geared to produce the same things as other industrial areas in our possession. Russian warlords usually function on autarkic production systems that seize everything crafted locally. Conversely, there are many goods that, that are produced nowhere. As a divider, Russian territories did not possess an economy large enough for the things beyond basic military weapons. All this beginning to, is to change. Is subject to change as we develop an integrated industrial policy prepared for a wide range of scenarios and needs. Wonder items, once rare items, are now being produced in large quantities as the Republic synergizes its various economic sectors to prevent any future purinary of goods. Entire supply chains of complex outputs are re reappearing in Western Russia. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will unite with the rest of Western Russia and begin to push further and further east. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.